Hello, hello, and welcome to the first episode of Tales of Folklore and Coffee. My name is Madeline Hope. I'm going to be your narrator, hostess, and rewriter for the entire series. So today we are going to be talking about the Celtic creation myth. I have rewritten this tale, as you will soon find out. Nothing too big has changed in the story. But I have taken a few liberties as I do know the connections between Welsh, English, a few other cultures within the European folktale circuit. So you may see some things that you recognize from other tales that I have added in and decided to connect them in a certain way. Just a little heads up for those who are listening in a car or if you're listening to this podcast in your living room or anywhere in a public space, make sure that if you have little children that the story does have dismemberment in it. So if it does get a little scary, make sure to skip this part or cover your kids' ears. Other than that brief warning of dismemberment, this podcast is appropriate for all ages, so you don't have to worry about covering your kids' ears every few seconds. So without further ado, let's get on to reading the creation myth of Celtic mythology. At the beginning of the world, there was vast blackness of space and time itself. There was the void, as most would call it. The void was sentient, having thought and want for companionship. One day, the void created Dawn and Danu. Dawn was a strapping god, his face beautiful and his body able. He looked around his area, it being shrouded in mist and nothingness. Soon. As he searched and roamed about this land, he shouted and found his plea was answered. He found one like him, although they were different. They were smaller, delicate, longer hair, and fair. He called her woman, for he was man. Her name was Danu. As soon as the two's eyes met, they were instantly enchanted by one another. Don's heart was set aflame by Danu, and he embraced her, saying finally that he would never let her go as long as the stars burned bright and the seas roared mightily. The two were very much in love, and their love bore Danu three sons. When Danu gave birth to her sons while still embraced to Don, interlocking the three children between her and her husband, Brienne, the eldest, was born with a sword one that could separate the gods. This sword was called Caliburn, though in its later life it would be called Excalibur, as it would be forged into such on the Isle of Avalon centuries later. While Brienne was stuck between Dawn and Danu, he plunged his sword into his father's ribs, making him loose his arms around his mother. Dawn fell, his strength failing him. Dawn knelt and saw his three sons for the first time, all grown warriors. Brienne finished his father, cutting off his head, then cutting his body into nine different members before scattering them across the new earth. Danu was beside herself. She started to weep as she beheld her beloved's body. Her tears soon turned into a great flood, washing away her sons and the nine pieces of Don's body to earth. Danu found herself sitting on what she named earth or soil for it was made from her husband's flesh. Wind blew through her hair, brushing it aside. This was the breeze that was once Dawn's breath. She glanced above to see the blue sky and drifting clouds. These were Dawn's head and brain. His face became the sunlight which warmed her. Day passed into night, and Danu saw that his mind became the moon, and as she wept, she found what made her rest uncomfortable. It was the stones that came from Don's bones. Danu looked out to what was now the shores to something called the sea, for it was made from her tears and Don's blood. At last, Danu looked around, finding herself alone. 
Her sons had gone, and Dawn was no more, she began to weep once more. Soon, two pieces of Dawn fell to earth, two seeds, one red and the other white, both acorns. One planted itself in the soil of new earth. The red acorn grew to become Dawn's brother Finn, who became the priest of the world. The second held Dawn's soul, which Danu saw, to her great delight, grew into a large tree which her tears had watered when she mourned her sons and Dawn. The seeds grew into a great oak, which is now known as Iok Aed. So this is the end for part one of the Celtic creation myth. I hope you enjoyed it. So I'm going to give my thoughts on this specific myth as it is a lesser known creation myth as some of the other ones known around the world, like such as the Bible and when God created Adam and Eve for the Garden of Eden. So this is going to be me talking a little bit more casually as I am not narrating. So as we see in comparison to the creation myths such as Adam and Eve, this one also has a male and a female, which is Dawn and Danu. The Void, I believe, takes the place of God in this instance as it created Dawn and Danu. Although where it really deviates is that there is no seven-day creation, which I find interesting, which is the most popular creation myth in mythology, if you would call it that. Dawn and Danu had three sons, although only one is described, which is Brienne, who holds a sword. This is where I deviate from the traditional myth, which I call it Caliburn and Excalibur, which this is the reason why. Excalibur, or the legend of King Arthur, was once a Welsh tale, which means it wasn't exactly English. It is actually from the Celtic people, although the English decided to take it and kind of rewrite it and rework it into their culture. I actually read a Wikipedia page that said that Brienne's sword was in fact Caliburn, which did turn into Excalibur later on, although there are other sources that say that Excalibur was forged in Avalon. While I believe that is the original tale of the myth, I felt like it was better to connect the two by saying it was reforged or forged into Excalibur from Caliburn, which was Brienne's sword which he was born with. I know this podcast was short, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below if you did. Tell me about some of your favorite myths and legends that you would like me to cover in the future. Make sure to download this on iTunes if you're listening on YouTube. Thank you very much. This is the first place I post it. Make sure to share this podcast around. It really does help me a lot. Thank you guys for listening again, and I will see you guys next week with part two of the Celtic creation myth. The music in this podcast was The Ballad of Robin Hood by Logan Epic Canto and Kara Morhen from The Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt.